Hey everyone, we're back. It's Emily, I'm here with Justin and Ripley and today we have a really exciting watch that we get to unbox with you guys for the sake of watch talk. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on our latest video content. But before we get to this exciting watch, we've gotta do a wrist check. So Justin, what are you rocking today? I'll start out, well, I'm going with the Tudor Black Bay. I'm going Beautiful. with the blue version, love it. I mean, it's pretty appropriate for today as we'll find out shortly, but uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I like the blue. A little a little secret yeah. if you can't catch it. Ripley, what have you got on? I uh, also got the memo for a Tudor, so I'm wearing a Tudor Black Bay 58, uh, strap version, um, just working off Justin here. Love it, well love it. I too got the memo and I've got a Black Bay uh, 58. I love that one. Yep, I love this as well. So if you haven't picked up on it, today we are talking about a very special Tudor. We've got this in recently and we just absolutely have to show you guys. So we're gonna do a little unboxing. Great guess, watch, really rare, let's check it out. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Surprise, we've got a Tudor Black Bay, but not just any Tudor Black Bay, Ripley. You know the details on this beautiful watch. Yes, it. so it is a Tudor Black Bay Black, like the 41 millimeter standard production model, mm -hmm. but it's not because it is the Ed Sheeran Divide Tour edition. Yeah. So, um, you know, in the past, Rolex themselves would even make some private label dials for their custom order pieces. You see the Domino's dials, uh, of course, Tiffany & Co dials, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they don't do that anymore, but that doesn't mean Tudor doesn't. Um, this, you get a Tudor Black Bay, uh, private labeled for the Ed Sheeran Divide Tour. Approximately 80 examples were made uh, and he gifted them to the people who worked on the tour. The tour itself was like two and a half years, so it, it made sense. It was a good thank you for a, a lot of hard work Global and effort. Tour, yeah. yeah, like 260 stops or something like yep. that. So, um, you know, it's not just an engraved watch either. You can tell right there on the dial, there's no death rating or chronometer certification text. Blue division symbol says the word divide in it. And you don't really see these all that often at all. Um, there, you do see certain private label tutors, rather it's, whether it's for Undefeated, uh, Paris Air, Google's watches for good, but um, a lot of it, it's a little bit, it's not like a random musician, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it's a really interesting and um, first one I've ever seen in person. First one I've ever seen. Yeah, me too. It's a really cool watch. Um, I like that they have the divide symbol right there and then it's blue, so it's it immediately stands out. Like when you see it from across the room, you can tell that it's a Black Bay, but you can tell that it's kind of special too, right? And then yes. you get up close and you see it's a divide tour. Um, it's kind of cool because one, there's only 80 pieces, which is, I mean, double digits in, in the limited For editions. a brand like Tudor, especially. Yeah, that's a, that's a tiny run. Um, also that they weren't available for sale. It's not something that, you know, it's like for Tiffany's that you can buy with the Tiffany dial. It's was, they were all purchased and given out as gifts. So it's not really, it's like a little bit of a, an extra to me, right? It's not something that you can just kind of go buy. Like it's gotta be a really special circumstance. Someone who that was given one had to have brought it up for sale and then we got it or you got it or whoever. So um, it's kind of special. I really like it. So the best part of the back of this watch actually has an engraving from Ed. Um, it just says, thanks for all of your hard work on this tour, love Ed, which is kind of nice. It really speaks to sort of the rarity of this watch yeah. and really who it came from. Some people know who Ed Sheeran is, some people don't. Right. And I think if you're looking at this watch, it could be twofold. One, you're a fan of his music and maybe this album as a whole, and it's something that you get to kind of have a piece of that history. Or if you're looking at this simply as just a watch collector, mm -hmm. rare pieces, especially in a limited run like 80, that's something to collect. Yeah. And Ed Sheeran is a huge watch collector yes. himself. So, I mean, it's... It's, I think even the model he chose kind of speaks to that. A Rolex is a very obvious choice, mm -hmm. uh, and this isn't like he was you know, being budget friendly on it. And just, you know, <laughs> obviously he need about 80 of them, so that, that'd be hard if you want to do a Samariners. But, right. um, you know, it's such an enthusiast brand, and I think that kind of speaks to it, that he's mm -hmm. not giving them the obvious choice or the instantly recognizable one or whatever was easiest for him to buy. It's, you know, it's a watch that you almost exclusively see on the wrists of people who like watches. Mm -hmm and uh, a really kind of cool, versatile one as well. Um, that's probably my favorite thing about this watch is the choice of watch that he went with. Um, you know, we were talking earlier, wh earlier where you don't really see a Tudor unless you're kind of a watch enthusiast, right? It's sure. not the first thing someone goes or notices. It's not like Rolex that's synonymous with luxury and when you have a lot of money, it's, you know, you go right there. Yeah. Tudor's a real kind of enthusiast brand and I love the choice that he made from that. And being a watch guy, it, it kind of makes a lot of sense, right? And I think um, he probably turned some people on to Tudor with this gift, right? The market value of these, considering the watch itself, you can buy for under four grand in its normal mm -hmm. Tudor intended condition. We're looking at a factor of you know, 10X because of just how rare it is. Yeah. And at a glance, you know this isn't your Tudor, standard Tudor mm -hmm. Black Bay, and it probably isn't something you're gonna see anymore. Right. Um, 
I can't imagine tutors just would let any musician or any person who had the money come in and order such a small batch where they're not only just engraving the case back, but doing a custom dial for it. So going forward in the future, yeah, it's probably 10x a tutor now, but if you had the Rolex equivalent from this 50 years ago, you know, we're talking about a six-figure watch. All right, so here's my real question, you guys. If you were working on the Divide Tour and Ed gave you this watch, would you keep the watch or would you potentially look to selling it? Um, well... I know there's a lot of factors. So I, although, I mean, obviously, if I had some personal relationship, but he seems like a great guy. I don't yeah. know myself. Uh, he wants to be friends. Reach out. <laughs> but I'd love a watch. I'd love. I'll take one as well. But um, I would keep it. I would keep it. I wouldn't necessarily say the same about a different private label custom order Black Bay. Uh -huh. But if I spent two and a half years of my life on the tour, working closely with him, mm -hmm. got to know him at all on a personal level, and then he felt the, you know, that it was right to give us a watch, especially one of this caliber. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that. I yeah. wouldn't put it up for sale uh, if I really need the money. I'd liquidate something else. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Where are you standing on this one? Um, I'm in the same boat. I would absolutely keep it. Um, I'm kind of a keeper anyway. I think it's pretty rare that I ever sell any watches, um, but I'm also sentimental, and I love that sentimental aspect of it. And you know, like Ripley said, if you worked on this tour for so long and you've invested so much yeah. time out of your life, um, I love that fact mm -hmm. that it's you know it's representative. And you know, 20 years from now, when you look back, you have that. And of course, being watch people, you know, it's a, a little bit easier choice. And I could see where other people who maybe yes. aren't into watches, um, you know, could do a lot more with the money or would care. Uh, a lot more about that than actually having the piece. So I could definitely see that side of the coin as well. But personally, I would absolutely keep see, it. See, now it's funny. I am kind of in the same boat you guys are. I'm a sentimental person. I genuinely enjoy sort of the association that memories um, have with tangible items. So this would probably have been something I would keep at least to start for a while. Um, let a few more years pass and see if there's really uh, uh, a desire to sell. But it's a beautiful watch. I love the association to it. Even just from a watch collecting standpoint, the rare, the rarity of it alone makes it a little bit more interesting to me than maybe just your standard well, Black Bay. Rarity coupled with willingness to let them go. I think we all just answered that if we were gifted the yeah. watch, we'd keep it. And I imagine that probably applies for the vast majority of those approximately 80 people who got it. Yeah. So while I might not feel the same about a different watch, those might come up for sale more when people, you know, might not like Paris Air when they leave the company or something like yeah. that. Whereas this, you know, you're never going to change what those two and a half years were mm -hmm. during that experience. And if you remember them fondly, why wouldn't you keep this as a memento of that time? And I, I there's a countable number that have ever come up for sale. So I think most of the recipients share yeah. our view. And we talk about 80 being a tiny amount of watches, mm -hmm. when in reality, it's way less because like we all just demonstrated, we're keeping it. So, I mean, let's say half the people are keeping them, which honestly, I think it's probably more, more than that. Probably, but if, sure. if half the people decided to sell it, that's only 40 that are ever available for purchase. Yeah. So um, it is really a rare and really special piece. Yeah, it's a fun one. Well, you guys, this I know is a little bit different of a watch talk, definitely a special edition, but we had to share with you a new arrival that has just come in. This watch is actually available on bobswatches.com, at least at the beginning of right our filming is, session. Yeah. So head on over there if you guys do have any interest and take a peek at it yourself. We've also got a great article on bobswatches.com with a little bit more details. So be sure to check that out too if this is interesting. Um, thanks you guys for having yeah, us. Yeah, this was a great a one. A fun conversation. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time.